I sit in this chair, people come in the back door, they don't know who they're talking to. Oh, well, so yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So all he's got to do is sit in this chair when he's on vacation, when <laughs> yeah. someone comes in with a chair proposal. <laughs> Just don't turn around. Yes, I will take all Are you going to sideboard, Steve? <laughs> I don't know. I give him my credit card my driver's license. You know, stuff. I know. Yeah, it works out. Things I don't want to do. <laughs> Here, go be me. So Gadget. Any questions? It? Hi, I'm Gib. Let's Hi, Gib. Let's gadget Gib. thing. So let's Hi, do a gadget Gib. thing. Let's we have a camera. camera. That's a gadget. So yeah, so I got the camera. I bought you know a, a tablet. Bought my wife an expensive uh, laptop, and she said it's too heavy. What is that? Eight inch? Uh, I, you know. So anyway, and so I <laughs> got a tablet. And then I got my, my cool watch. And so this made me think. Well, there's probably a lot of people. Out. And I got my cell phone, you know, the Samsung S4, and so all these gadgets. I thought, well, we should probably do something about gadgets because I'm sure everybody. Yes. At PenguinCon has done like all kinds of cool stuff recently. I, I can make fire technology. <laughs> <laughs> I think you see a, um, a few millennia go out. I should have invited him because he's out. He's out there in the uh, downstairs lobby. Uh, he's got the. Uh, it's our. Is it Arduino or Raspberry Pi? Raspberry Pi. Yeah, Raspberry Pi with the main emulator, and it's a kit from Adafruit Industries, and he's got there, and he's got the charging thing in his uh, USB charger. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, he's got he's got he's got main monitors, so he's got hundreds of ROMs on. Oh yeah, nice little menu interface and stuff like that. He's got so many gadgets. When he opened it up to, he showed me that he opens up, he's got all every gadget. I should just like drag it up. Come on, show him off. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I got my two Raspberry Pis, and I did a couple things with them, and we had a couple of buffs about that. And His kit's really nice, I and mean, he's put together really well. Yeah, so there's some fanatics out there were doing some really fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the Raspberry Pi is a whole, whole niche out there. Um, yeah, I could go on about all the little things that I've seen recently, and you know, just within the past year on those things, it's just phenomenal. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. like five panels on the Raspberry Pi here. Yeah, yeah I, did, <laughs> I did two of them, so. Yeah. <laughs> I was just playing a game yes. downstairs. Uh, Some people in the hallway. Oh, the And they were using the Sony PlayStation. Oh, yeah. The little globe, the motion tracker globes, and then the guy he had gotten this game, he got as a, pre, a promo from contributing to a Kickstarter, but it's a jousting game, mm -hmm. and it's called Johann Sebastian Jousting. It actually gets really sophisticated. You can only move so fast at times, and when the music yeah. slows down, you gotta move slower. We saw him playing it. But it, it has nothing, you don't have to have a PlayStation. Exactly. Right? Well, you at least it won't be available that way for a while. Right? He said Tuesday. Tuesday you have to buy it for a PlayStation, or you can get it on an Xbox, and then It'll be, and that's one of the things they talked about. Like even the uh, Connect for the Xbox when it first came out, they said this is crap. The games are horrible for it, but the technology in it, amazing. The people were hooking them up to their computer, doing all sorts of cool stuff with them. They're like, the technology is cutting edge. It's great. We can do all these third-party games and cool stuff with it. But the stuff Microsoft's doing with it, they can't sell them. <laughs> yes. I have I have a connect for the 360 and I got the Xbox One and, mm -hmm. and I find it a little spooky, but I'm willing to sacrifice that little bit of privacy <laughs> in a room that I only go in there when I want to use it. I, the best one was, was a gaming room for it. Yeah, <laughs> the best one was when it was like I remember before the count the Xbox One and PS4 came out and they were talking about the new Connect and how sophisticated it was. It can it can detect the wrinkles in your clothes. It sees the dark. Yeah, and all this. And one guy's like, can it detect the disappointment on my face? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the software on my camera has face recognition. Yeah. And it recognizes the smile. Yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, that's, and that's stuff that's even, it's, I don't know, it seems like one of those things, they kind of start, and then they shelf the project, and then, oh, yeah. that, nobody's going to be into that. And then you find out a few years later, people won't. Yeah. The other thing you hear with the Kinect is that uh, part of it, they've got this, really high resolution thermal sensor on it that can detect how many people there are in the room. Yes. Because they're gonna start DRMing the uh, and they cut back on streaming. that. They were they were talking about it. Um but when they had when they talked about the heavy DRM council, they just they cut all that back out. Well, because Sony released the commercial how you share games on a PS4. 
And then they, they make this big intro like it's going to be sophisticated. Step one, sharing the game. And it's just two guys, one's holding it. He goes, here. And the second guy goes, thank you. Done. <laughs> <laughs> they, they really thumbed their nose at Microsoft on it. They were joking. They, you know, should we call it Xbox One or should we call it Xbox 180? Because they just turned around. Oh, the yeah. Right well, release. What, I was, what I've, I've been reading, though, is that this is something that they're just laying and waiting for. Uh, but what's going to happen is when you go to the Microsoft and you want to buy or rent a movie, mm -hmm. it's going to be based on how many people are oh, watching yeah. it. And, and the movie is going to, they're going to charge you, they're going to count and how many people are in the room. I don't get where they get off doing that because it's going to just, I don't think they're thinking ahead of how you know many people, I, and I think that's one of the things why they took it out was so they could sell consoles off the start because yeah. the minute they release that, their, console, their, their sales are gone. Because they're going to be like, wait, I can buy a PS4 for 100 bucks less, and it's not going to pester me? As long as we keep some competition in the market, there, we won't see that. You know? Yeah. Well, Netflix isn't going to go, oh, we need a thermal sensor to count the heads in the room. I know. But so as long as there's competition in the market, all there will be the media. Well, that's that. that. I mean, that would be fair. It's cool gadgets. Mm -hmm. Cool gadgets. Ooh. So I, I will say, though, you know, when we oh, first talked about the quality of the games, when I first, when I got our first Connect on the 360 and even on the Xbox One, oh, we a couple games for it. We never played hardly any of the games yeah. that had anything to do with it. But the thing, and it goes to this kind of transfer over the phone, is the, the voice recognition uh, and features are tremendous. That's, oh, yeah. that's what I use it for almost exclusively. I... Honestly, I mean, I, I, I've looked at the Xbox One and the PS4, and I'm like, man, maybe I should get one. Then I remember, I have a computer. Yeah. You, you know, and that's Do just like with the Steam service. Box coming out. Oh, sorry. Steam Box. Just like with the Steam Box coming out. Part of it is, you know, the, what's going to make the Steam Box is going to be expensive in terms of comparing it to a console. It's going to cost probably, you know, some, they're looking at twice as much on some of these as the Xbox One. But when you look at the cost of games, you make it up in the long run. Because whereas every time a game comes out for Xbox One, 60 bucks, 60 bucks, 60 bucks. Games come out on Steam, they go on sale. I mean, I just picked up, um, what's the last game I bought? I bought Portal 2. Normally it's down to 20 bucks. They had a 75% off sale. And if you bought two of them, $8. Nice. <laughs> Is Steam Bucks going to be that expensive? Yeah, they're looking it's going to be kind of pricey. Wow. The reality is... That was actually something that we were talking about in the previous panel uh, for gaming, since you mentioned games and all mm -hmm. that. Uh, that as far as the digital technology goes uh, for the sales of things, uh, Steam sales and like the app stores are really kind of killing out that sort of... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, like, the, the, you can't keep up with the sales. People are, the people are being injured the most aren't really the big box companies even, yeah. uh, the, the big publishers and everything, because they have, they sell, they move so many millions of mm -hmm. units that they can afford to take the hit. And it's just like, but even the smaller if they're... independent, uh, independent firms, well, they can't take the hit nearly as uh, graciously. Yeah, and you look at like Myers and Walmart, okay, we didn't sell enough Xboxes, we sold jeans, groceries, everything else to make our profit. Yeah. You know, GameStop, we didn't sell enough games, so that's all we sell. They were talking though, just be. Um, I heard there were talks of them just becoming like a tablet gadget reseller because they're just not making the money on the games well, anymore. But I mean, talking again, getting into gadgetry and stuff. Who wants a CD anymore? I mean, who wants? I don't want no. to own physical media. I don't. I don't no. want to buy DVDs. I don't. You know, I, and you know what's funny is that you want your data to be put. You know, club. I want it all the time. I want to drive, terabyte drive? No, I want it. I don't even want to own. I, I just want yeah, to. You, you know the government's on it on every piece of paper. I, you you know what? Like, that, that I'm with, and I understand. And I, you know what? I'm completely. I, I have huge hangups about that. But as far as, as far as my entertainment media goes, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care if they know I'm watching. I, and I don't. And I don't. I. You know, I'm to the point now where. Okay, so I have. In my oh, Mike talking about what you're reading. I have in my garage three milk crates full of compact discs, and I, I keep those. They're all I've ripped them all to MP3, and they're probably in two or three different places on the cloud at this point. And I like that because I own that, and 
the licensing on the CDs. Exactly. exactly. How do you, how do you prove, can prove that you've got licensing on them? Because you don't have yeah, the CD. Yeah, you got to have it for license. Purposes. Yeah, you can right. legally download music if you physically own any version. Like if you own an old A track, like you go get an Ozzy A track for a dollar at a flea store, at a flea market, you can go download everything on that. Well, hold a second. You mean if I've got like an old LP, I can download everything? Yup. Yeah, I can legally use. Yup. That's called a uh, digital backup. And you can, you're fair to have. Well, you're fair to use your law. So where, where, where do I download all this stuff from? You can download it anywhere. That's the beauty of it. You could go to a torrent site, get it, and at worst they say, well, you download that illegally. Nope, I own the thing. Come yeah. after me if you want. And they rarely catch the, it's a lot of people look at it literally. It's not the downloaders that they run around prosecuting, it's the uploaders. Yes. It's you distributed, so you should be prosecuted because you well, have isn't it my backup that's there? You can't distribute your backup yes. to your friends. You may be in possession of it, but you can't give it away. Correct. Right. Well, I think there's got to be all kinds of little weird parts of that rule. Is that all right? right? Is it my backup of the, you know, my, my friend's uh, LP, I'm maintaining the backup for well, you have a hard so time in court arguing that you allowed them to back up? Yes. That you allowed 10,000 strangers to back up your stuff on a torrent in the cloud? Exactly. Well, we, I don't know if that legal angle has been approached or not, but it might be interesting. I, I, I actually, I, actually I, I've heard of Similar, similar sort so of So I have things. a good torrent. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, there's very yeah. fine line, and it really, it, it depends on the, uh, the the judge and everything that you end up seeing. When, when you're talking, you well, that's store anything. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you, like, you storing a backup of, like, let's say, everyone in this room had, you know, MP3s, and you had a server, and we're storing it on your server, and all of us are paying for the service for you to store that, then that would be more legal. I'm not gonna say it's legal, I'm saying it's more legal. Well, and it's just However, like for if it was we're all storing it on there and then we all have access to each other's stuff, that's right. gonna be a lot less. Yeah, that, right. That's well, and it, it, again though, part of it is like community library? <laughs> well, part of it is too if you look at like the whole Kim.com thing with um, Mega Upload. His was a gray area. It's kind of similar because it was a gray area. You had all these people uploading and sharing music. They went after him because he hosted the distributing site. Technically, however, he can't look at what you're sharing, so he can't be liable. For it. And that's where the that's why they won't expedite him to the U.S. because they're like, well, technically, he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Well, so he just, he's facilitated. He facilitated it, which protects him under your standard uh, telco. Yup. Well, so there's you know some interesting things that I would play off of this idea that you know someone's not responsible for other people's actions. Exactly. So if you take a DVD, you throw it in the trash, right? Somebody walking by on the sidewalk sees that DVD in the trash, picks it up. Now, according to the way I understand the law to work, that is, if you put something out in the trash, it's public. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, so now you own this DVD yeah. that you never right. had any contract with anybody, made any purchase agreement with, right? But now you're obligated under some law that that the, you know, the America, you know, the United States has that says you're obligated somehow to the person who created that. It's well, a very bizarre kind yeah. of to, to inherit something so without any to, contract or an agreement with anyone. That's what you went to Cory Doctorow's panel a little about copyright. No, you, you, just, can't, yeah. you can't, you can't, you can't inherit a contract. Well, couldn't they take, take it anybody get a garage sale going on? What they're basically saying is they're trying to make that legal. So exactly, but yeah, exactly. So that's illegal. You're not allowed to sell. Yeah, I don't know. The government is, is it, will make whatever illegal wants to make illegal to fill the pockets of whoever their cronies are. Yes. Is it fair though to call a license to contract? You're not. You're yes not. and no. I mean, it's it's basically they're saying, hey, it's still ours. You don't technically own it. Right. You know, and it's a contract has you have to have a signature and you have to have a validation of that signature. And also. you have to have um, so, something to benefit both well, sides. Well, they this decided if you agree on your iTunes, you have agreed to the contract and it's legally binding. Yep. Not that you've read the 17 pages in the iTunes agreement. You, you didn't read that? Yeah. You guys yeah. read yeah. the terms and conditions? I thought I read that. I think technically you actually have to, you know, from from a, a lot of the contracts you actually have to uh, the court decided, acknowledge that yes, we received your agreement to the, this. The court decided two things. One of them is you can click I agree. That's what they want. Yeah, they do whatever they want, but 
Well, there's nothing logical about what they no. do. No. Uh, they also the decided seals. cutting the seals agrees to the end user license agreement for physical box office. Even though you've well. never actually been able to read the agreement because it's inside the box. Yeah, I've mean, always found that one yeah. really. Because you have to cut the seal to get the agreement out. And see, I would even even that, that would be an argument you could actually make because now that's uh, that's just like, you know, if you're speeding down the road, but everybody's speeding. Yeah, they're good. You know, if I were going slower, then you could me for a speed. Let's face it, though. These are all, all these things we're talking about right now. Most of this stuff is just... It's the it's like the death throes of industries whose business, yes, business yes. models have just been. They don't want all the business models. There's no logic to the government anymore. Yeah. So while we're talking, let's swing it all the way back around and bring it back on topic. Who's got a Chromecast that watches all this wonderful media? Oh, I've got a Chromecast. Chromecast? No. I just want to ask one of my favorite Chromecast tech versus YouTube, or what's the difference? No, no, I mean, you can watch YouTube about Chromecast. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, Chromecast is a thirty-five dollar. Uh, HDMI. Oh, one of those little yeah, things. Yeah. HDMI dongle. Um, Google finally released the SDK. As soon as that thing came out, I ordered it. I got it last year. I love that thing. Um, How's it different from Roku? This it's, it's, it's Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi, and it's, but it's a dongle. And Roku's not made a copy of it. I can't remember what it's called. It's like called the Roku Stick or something like yeah. that. But this becomes your remote. Yep. Everyone on your Wi-Fi network, well, their Android or iPhone device, becomes the remote that controls it. And what you're doing is it picks it up on the local Wi-Fi network and it's sending uh, essentially HTTP commands and tells it to uh, go get this movie, go get this YouTube video, uh, go get whatever. And then the Chromecast has a really basic HTTP browser built into it and it just streams everything directly to your TV. So you pick the video you want, which is really convenient because if, uh, we actually a lot of times, we don't have cable TV, I cut the cord years ago out of my house. And when my friends come over, we all sit around on the couch and we'll pick up stupid YouTube videos together. And you can do it. Yeah, well, everyone's just sending to the Chromecast. How do you yeah. Do it? Uh, oh. Really, really simple. You just pull up YouTube on here. Yeah. And uh, the YouTube app. Yeah. Oh, standard YouTube app. Okay. I was and gonna say because I've got that and I do the same. X Xbox One has that built in as well. It's yeah. The same thing. Um, what's nice is everyone on your Wi-Fi, so all my friends come over to all kinds of my network, and everyone's YouTube app has that on there. Does so it, it does shows it. what's in the queue. So. You know, Steve so can come over to my house and be like, hey, do you guys see this video? I'm going to check this out. You can put it in the queue. And I'm like, oh, yeah, after we watch this, we're going to watch this next video. And I can throw that Do you have to pair for that? No, no pairing, no nothing. It's, it's just going to be on the same way. It's just a direct send. It's yep. a direct send. Yeah. What it does is it goes, like, we tell it play. And then all we're doing is it's basically taking, instead of playing on our phone, it's on the Chromecast going out to the web and pulling it straight to that. No, I'm, I'm with you. It just, can you queue though? You, like you, yeah. Guess yeah. you can do another. Yep. I gotta mess with that. I think is for thirty-five bucks. The I'll best use. thing is when he has his buddies over and they're all watching a movie, and I get on there and shoot Barbies with Rapunzel on there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you can, can, you can take over. Anybody who gets on there can take over. over. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Anyone yeah. on there could take over the video. Because it'll give you like an option. You can even name them. Yeah, you can name them. Them. So we have like the ones in the kids' room. We got the ones yeah. in the living room. Oh, yeah, room. we got our kids' And you can tell them what one to yeah. send to. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you can also use a Chrome browser to send to it. And I was going to say you can stream from oh, yeah. your laptop. Yeah. You can do your local laptop. content from another. Like, I can actually go from my server directly to you. If I'm on my desktop. I, say, I, I do local content from my phone. Yeah. Like, I can go, if I'm sitting at my desktop, I can turn my TV. Go, hey, go to the server, it'll play it in my Chrome browser, and it'll pull it from the server to my computer and then shoot it right back to the TV. Yeah, it works really well. Um, well what type of TV do you have to have? It's got a HDMI port. HDMI port, that's what yeah. you need? Yep, that's it. It's USB so, on, it doesn't hurt. If you have USB on the TV, you can power it from the TV. So when it's Otherwise, yeah, you gotta plug it in. Yeah, if not, you just gotta, it comes with its own power adapter. They also, if you have a TV, now there's there's TVs that are coming up, but it's got like an enhanced an enhanced HDMI port. With power. That's power. Yes. Yeah. That's in the HDI, uh, I think it's 1.4B spec or something like oh. that. Has power in it, which is kind of cool. Um, then because these devices are coming out, like I said, Roku copied them. Um, they just, you know, what you was. Know, you know who else copied them? I got this thing I'm actually working on at work. Wise, you know, the yeah. zero client manufacturer, Dell bought them last year because they've come up with a US or an HDMI stick that's the same thing as Chromecast, except it also had, they also built a Bluetooth connection into it. So it's Wi Fi and Bluetooth and yeah. HDMI. And the thing with it is, is that it works as a Cloud Connect zero client. So you can set up like uh, Citrix or you can set up uh, like VMware Horizon View or whatever, and you can do cloud-based 
VDI computing through that stick. So you can go to any, it costs 100 bucks, go to any hotel room, any place you got a HDMI, you go. plug it into your TV, Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse, that's your desktop. It doesn't matter where you are, where you go, same desktop, same everything. You that's know, it's it's all in the cloud. What, what's the uh, cloud software? Is it just Chrome? Or no, from the, wise or the, wise the wise one, you would have to, you you could use Citrix or you could use VMware or whatever, and you have to have somewhere you have to have a virtual desktop. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. so it's virtual desktop, a Windows yeah. based or Win Linux or anything. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. It's, it's a VM yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Right. With the Chrome, with the Chrome yeah, so it does have the option. Um, I use it for presentations. Uh, I actually use the Google, uh, all the Google Docs services and the Google Presentation Service. And they can integrate with the Chromecast into that. So I can take my laptop and really? this, and I can say, oh, I want to take this presentation and I'll put it to my Chromecast and find it's on a network. Uh, wow. Which is getting really silly because it's built right into Chrome. It's a free plugin. So you're, you're probably going to start seeing it. So no more plugging into projectors yeah. or anything. If you have a Chromecast on a network, if you, you know, at a conference room like this, we just connect to their Wi Fi. They have a Chromecast and a TV here, and any one of us can connect because it's built in. It's cross platform Mac, Linux, Windows. It just works. And it's all I run is Linux. And you go right from your phone. Yeah, you can go from your phone or you can go from there. But yeah, but you go, hold on, make sure you have this slide right here and we just send it to it. Especially if you're grouping or a meeting or something, each person has the option, or if we got our laptops here, you can screencast too. It'll actually do, it's got, a, it's got two options when you cast the, you can tab cast, which means don't show the browser window or any of the effects on it, it only shows exactly what's yeah. inside the browser. But then there's another option. The Chrome browser? Yeah, the, the Chrome browser. It does not. Uh, Firefox has really rudimentary support for it. Some of reverse engineered it, but it's not good. You have to use Chrome browser. That's your only thing. But it's cross platform. It's, but yeah, not that big of a deal. But yeah, you, it's my favorite browser. Yeah, yeah, most people. I like Firefox. Um, I have Chrome too. But I wish like Firefox better. Yeah. You've got a lot of things to do with it. Yeah, Firefox is right. I'm a fan of, absolutely a fan of both. So yeah, I'm using it. As long yeah, as you're not using it as more, I'm fine. But uh, it gives you the option to broadcast your desktop itself. So if you want to do a presentation, you can actually fire it up, minimize the Chrome browser, but it'll continue broadcasting your whole desktop, and you can do any software demonstrations and things wow. like that. The limitation is the speed of the computer. It does take a certain amount of CPU. Yeah. If you have anything i3 or higher, no problem uh, broadcasting full screen. If you're running a really slow, older, if you're running Celeron, you're running something not the older, you shouldn't be running a Celeron. You shouldn't be running any of these, but if you are, you're going to get a screen lag. Um, so if you're trying to watch video or anything, it's not going to be real time. For anything you do, there's going to be a delay before it shows up. Yeah. Well, so I just talked to someone who got his wife a Chrome and Chromebook, and it was like, he said it was a Celeron. The Chromebook Celerons are a little different. Those, yeah. I have one of those, too. Well, those hardly, great. you're running the Chrome OS. It's because you're running Chrome OS, it's minimalized. It's basically a browser with a keyboard attached. Yes. That's the best way to describe how the Chrome works. I mean, you can do the browser, you can do it on a Chromebook. But you can't leave the browser. There's no other. Right. The other only OS is Linux, but you're completely shielded from it. Everything's hidden from you. Um, they work really good, but they're focused. As long as I use it, I, I call it my couch book. I use it to control my semi couch. It controls my Chromecast. I surf the web. I reply to messages. I reply to emails. I message on Facebook, and then I close the lid and throw it under. It's a Celeron, but it's Haswell based. You get almost nine hours of battery life on it, which is great for that. You know, you get 1366 by 768 screen, so you have decent resolution. SSD in it, instant on and off. It's 199. It's a cheap little gadget, but it is truly one of those other gadgets I bought that I said this it, is like. They replace netbooks as a whole. Yeah. yeah. You know, nobody wants to. I, I can get a Chromebook, which is lighter, faster, does they, all the same things. They're fit and finished. I mean, they're not as high quality because they're 199, but they got that Mac. They don't have yeah. the applications and. There's so many things but you cannot do with those. Part things. of the problem is you couldn't do it on a netbook anyhow because the hustle of the processor was the same. Right. Uh, I, I, I have a netbook. I, I, I just switched to a laptop because I've got some applications that are a little more beefy easy recently. <laughs> but I used it for friggin' two years, and for most of the other things, I can use it. Yeah, I just mean, if you're, you're, you're just browsing the web and that, doing Word documents. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I run applications, and, and uh, yeah, you got, it the, does the job. If you run an app, if you run some apps, you know, where you have any Chromebooks are not for you. But like I said, it's, I have a setting, I, the way my IKEA table is, is that the little shelf where it hides and it slips right in there. 
I get it out, I'll hear my phone ding, and I don't want to type an email back to reply to someone. So I'll grab it out, pull it out, type the email real quick. It's actually a really nice keyboard on it. I, I like the keyboard better than my Sony Ultrabook. So I type real fast here, close the lid, set it back in the shelf, wait for the alarm to go off again, and look for the next email. I can see if I got real work to do is I do some video editing work and some other stuff. I'm going to go grab my really nice Sony Ultrabook, and that's where I'm going to run my apps. I'm going to run my yeah, Photoshop yeah, yeah, yeah. and my graphics. So it's not something I would say replaces the computer, but you get some general users, not power users, to go, I just want to update Facebook. I promote this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can't get my email. You screw it up. There is no way to really break this thing. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much an idiot-proof box. But then they work really smooth. And for the price, $199, um, from the time you press the button to the time you can uh, start browsing the web is about, I don't know, eight seconds with the SSD. It's got an incredible boot time on it. And uh, the restart, it'll load OS updates in the background and a little icon. I'm like a Google, Google salesman. Oh, yeah. I got automated vehicles. I don't I like automated vehicles. I, I, I sell, I'm just full disclosure, I, I sell Google Cloud Services. That's one of my things my business does. We move companies around. Ah. I've been really happy okay, with Okay, so I was right. right. They've done yeah. it better than most but others. I was going to say, say oh, okay, now hold a second. We'll, we'll, let's go with automated vehicles. Google's not going to win that one. Google is way behind. Are they? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I. I so how do we know they'll buy it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's certainly a policy. Wait, someone's better than us. How much you want? <laughs> We're paying money. Do, do you here. know the history of, of yeah. the development of automated vehicles? Very little. Oh, okay. So I, you, go yeah, I'm not an expert on that because I just it goes way back. back. People yeah. working for, for oh, yeah, many yeah. many decades. You know, I, I, I worked for Toyota, and all the all the automotive manufacturers are working on automated cars. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, the concept. So is I'm, I'm getting to that right. point, but I'm just going to yeah. give a little more history, so it's that it backs up why they're ahead. Okay, Be because uh, well, they've got the most. The Google's got the most publicity, but in the background, everybody else. Is so, 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 so back in the '80s, you know, I had a professor. He got a vehicle uh, that could go, you know. 100 feet down the quarter, probably 150, 150 feet down the quarter. They wouldn't publish his article until he sent them a video because they didn't believe it. Okay, it was that hard of a thing. But, you know, they, people were doing it. 20 odd years later, close to it, yeah, um, uh, 2004, no vehicle had gone more than a, a couple thousand feet. Okay, it's not much improvement. 2004 comes around. And they have a big competition. People put some real effort into it. Taking by the DARPA, by the DARPA competition, yeah. and uh, one vehicle went nine miles. It was huge, order of magnitude jump plus. Yeah. Okay. Come 2005. Okay. Five vehicles finished a 120 mile course. Again, in one year. 2004, more than order of magnitude, 2005, another order of magnitude change. And one of those that finished that 120 mile course was from University of uh, Louisiana, Louisiana State, one of the two. And they were in New Orleans and they had just gone through a hurricane. Moral of the story, in a year, you can jump a, a year, a, you know, a, an order of magnitude improvement. So from a technological perspective, Everybody's making that jump, okay? So if you lose a year from a, a, a development perspective, you're done, okay? It's, but every, because everybody's moving. And his point is, uh, and, and the people who did win were the guy from Stanford who works at Google, who runs the Google project uh, in 2005. 2007 comes along, and the GM team wins, okay, with Carnegie Mellon, okay? So GM, they were right there. They were second and third. They had two teams. Um, in the 2005 competition, uh, and then they came in first in the uh, Urban Challenge in 2007 where they were on some army roads with stop signs and all of that, no lights, no pedestrians, but other cars. Um, so it was a real urban environment. Uh, so, so, 2000, so, so again, massive things are happening. Every car manufacturer is creating these automated vehicles. Google's doing it too. They're not really ahead. They're publicizing. Yeah. They, they might be fancier and better. The guy who did it, uh, Thrun, he's a great abstractor. So he did some really great stuff uh, to make a jump to win the 2005 competition. He had only a dozen people on his team. He had some corporate people supporting him. I 